In this video, we'll be unboxing the CNC machine from Axiom. Hey, click the subscribe button. Thanks. There's nothing much to say about the packaging. It was nice. Everything was wrapped tightly. Nothing was damaged during shipping and everything was in its own individual box. So it was nice and convenient doing the unboxing. The courier was nice enough to bring the machine into my garage. I know that some companies out there won't allow their guys to do that for you, but it was nice that he was able to do that for me. I have the Pro Plus 8 model, which is the 24 by 48 bed size. It's a pretty large machine, so you wanna make sure you have a little bit of room to assemble it. What I had to do was open up some of the boxes and throw the cardboard away. The thing about that is you want to make sure you have all your components before you throw the boxes away. They're sometimes wrapped tightly and they're very small. So just double check before you toss any of your boxes out. This box here will have your computer as well as all of the parts for you to assemble your base. And in this long box, you'll find the two rails that connects the frames together. It will be the first item that you'll have to assemble. The instructions were pretty decent. They weren't the best. I wish they had a little bit more photos, a little bit more visuals for you to kind of look at to see what exactly they're saying. But the key thing to note here when you're installing your rails is that you want the long portion of the rails to lay flat or horizontal. That way the toolbox can be supported on there as well as the other shelf. You'll need a bolt and two washers to connect the rails to your frame. There'll be a total of four on each connections and you wanna make sure that you're not over tightening it right now. Later on, you'll go back and square up the entire frame and then you can go ahead and tighten it. And this is the leveling feet. You'll have four of those that needs to be installed at the bottom of the two frames. You need the smaller bolt and two of these washers to install the casters and they simply just bolt into place. The rails for the frame is really heavy if you're going to try to bolt it in yourself. You'll need some kind of platform or something to hold up the other side while you bolt up the opposite end. What I did was I bolted in one bolt and used that as leverage to hold up the frame and then I went to the opposite side and secured it with two bolts to keep it in place. With that installed I went back to the other side and took out the bolt that was holding up the frame, aligned the holes and then installed the remaining bolts into place. Now I can lift the frame into the correct position. The shelf simply falls into place. You want to make sure you have the four rubber feet installed so that the shelf won't be able to move anywhere. If you do opt for the toolbox, you simply have to install the two brackets that are inside the toolbox. It took me a little while to find that. They're connected with these two button head screws and you can go ahead and slide it into place. Final piece is to install the hook for your controller. The 
next day I borrowed an engine hoist from a local mechanic shop and you definitely need some help lifting up this bed because it is heavy. It's important that if you are using straps, you want to put it underneath the metal frame. You don't want to put it underneath the aluminum bed because the gantry actually rides on a rail system underneath the aluminum bed. If you do put the straps underneath the bed, you could possibly bend those rails and damage your machines. So it's important for you to know where you're going to put your straps and how you're going to lift it up. Since my engine hoist was not able to get directly under the machine, I had to lift it up little by little until the engine hoist was centered on the machine. That way the machine would be able to lift directly up and not tilt it at an angle. If you had five friends who was able to help you, you'd probably get this done in a couple minutes. It took me about 30 minutes because I had to lift up the machine a little bit, slide it over, drop it down, lift it up a little bit, slide it over, repeat until the actual hoist was directly centered on top of the machine. And if you're going to use the engine hoist, just make sure you take your time and look at all of your connections make sure that your strap is strong enough to lift up this i think like 400 pound machine um, and yeah just take your time at this point i was pretty confident that the machine would lift up straight and not tilt in any way so i can now go ahead and lift it up and install it onto the frame It's probably the most nerve-wracking part of the whole assembly process. You want to make sure that the toolbox and the shelf is out of the way. I had to move it out because the legs of the hoist didn't fit underneath the frame. Once I had the machine over the base, it was a nice sigh of relief. The machine connects to the base with a rubber puck, I guess it's the spacer, and that simply bolts down into the frame. Now I can go ahead and push the machine into place. This location that you'll see here shortly is not the end location that I placed the machine. I actually decided to rearrange the entire shop um, simply because I wanted to make sure that the dust collection system made sense for this machine. This was really far away from the dust collector and it got in the way of my table saw and being able to work around it was a little bit of a hassle so I ended up rearranging the entire shop because of that. There's two holes in the back of the toolbox where you can run the wires for the computer. And then you can go ahead and install the stepper motor for the Z-axis. and the cover slides into place and is secured by two screws on either side. Learning from my previous CNC machine, it's definitely nice to have some kind of light to light up the surface that you're cutting just to see what's going on with your cutter head. So I went ahead and upgraded and got the LED light kit for this. It's a pretty easy install. You just have to remove the panel and feed the wire through the grommet. There is not much space. So what I did was I fed it through the inside rather than the outside because the head of the connection is pretty large and it wouldn't fit through the grommet. 
So I found that this was the easiest way of doing it. Inside the stepper motor, just to the left, there will be an empty connection point and you can connect the LED to that. You want to make sure the bottom of the gantry is clean. They do provide an alcohol wipe for you to clean down the bottom before you install the LED. And once you have it installed, you go ahead and screw back in the cover plate. The LED lights is definitely not a necessity, but what is a necessity is getting the dust out. The CNC machine makes a ton of dust and it gets everywhere. Believe me, trust me, you want to make sure that you buy some kind of dust shroud so that you can properly remove all the dust off of the workpiece. One, it helps with your bits, it keeps the bits nice and cool. And also it keeps the dust down in your shop and also in your lungs. So it's been about a week or so since the last clip that you saw. Um, things have been busy at the house and work and everything. So since then I've moved the CNC closer to the dust collection system, mainly because I felt like this is the location where it doesn't really get in the way with other tools in the shop and also it frees up some floor space so that I can put a assembly table later on in the future. Now that I have it situated where I want it to be, I went ahead and used a level to level out the entire machine with the leveling feet. You want to get the longest level that you can get your hands on because the longer the level, the greater the discrepancy of how level your machine is relative to your floor. So don't go with the, the one foot level, try to go to a, at least a three or four foot level. It will give you a better reading. So I, I got the machine leveled and I also went ahead and connected the dust collection system to the dust collection port. It is an additional upgrade. You definitely don't want to skimp out on that. The CNC machine creates a whole bunch of dust. So having some kind of dust shroud is very important when you're going to spend a lot of time um, batching things out. You don't want to stand there with the hose collecting dust as the machine cuts. So Axiom does pre-program their machines to have a surfacing tool path. So I'm just going to install my bit and then run the program and we'll see what happens. The bit that I'm using is an inch and a half surfacing bit. I know that the manual calls for an inch and a quarter, but upon researching, I noticed that a lot of people were having problems with the program leaving a groove around the edge of the wasteboard. So I opted for a larger bit to make sure that it would cut the entire edge of the board. One issue people had whenever they surfaced the board for the first time was that the milling process left grooves on the Y axis. This is probably because the spindle wasn't properly trimmed. Um, I think I got lucky. Mine was pretty much perfectly flat and I didn't notice any grooves. So if yours does have grooves, then you might want to go and make some adjustments to account for that. That's pretty much the unboxing and assembly. In the next video, I'll go ahead and give you my review and comparison to the Shapoko XXL. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please consider subscribing and also hit that like button. Thanks.